we talked about CSAT survey and quality assurance for your metrics, today we are going to talk about AHT or average handle time. Hey there Ninja! Welcome back to my channel. This is Rayo once again and you're still watching Call Center Ninja. If you're new here, I share real stories and tips to help you begin, enjoy, and survive your call center lifestyle. So please consider subscribing by clicking the red subscribe button down below. And if you have been watching my videos but you haven't subscribed yet, please click that subscribe button. And I would really appreciate it. So basically, AHT or average handle time is the number of minutes that you took the call. So usually it's measured in seconds or in minutes. And each account or each company has its own target metric, of course. It depends on the type of work or task that you do. In my case, it was customer service. Uh, we actually started with an average handle time of three minutes, and then it went up to four to seven minutes towards the end part of uh, my stay in the call center that's because the client decided to add a lot more things on our QA evaluation form that we need to that we needed to accomplish so they also somehow increased the AHD how do you compute AHD so it is your total talk time which is the time that you spend talking with the customer and the customer is talking with you plus your total hold time. So even if you place the customer on hold because you're doing something or you're transferring the call, it also adds to your um, overall AHT plus your after call work or what we call ACW. After your call, sometimes some accounts require their agents to write a quick report or whatever happened or transcribed during the call. And if you average all those three, that will be your average handle time. In my case previously, we did not have after call work. It was zero after call work. So just imagine, you know, we need to take one call after the other. Um, whereas if you have after call work, then at least you can breathe or you can rest for a while after your last call. But in our case, nada, no after call work. And it was very, very queuing. There were so many calls coming in. So if you have after call work, then treasure it. But anyway, so total talk time plus hold time plus after call work equals your average handle time. The lower or the smaller the number, the better because that means that you are efficient, hopefully because not all the time that your HT is low that you're efficient. It must be that because you rushed through your call or the resolution. So. You know, your QA analyst will find out if you did that or your supervisor will find out if you did that. Personally, I can say that AHT is a tricky metric. Basically, your goal is to be able to finish the call and be efficient um, in resolving the customer's concern in the most reasonable time period. So, there's a balance between you know, helping the customer and being efficient and helping the customer resolve the issue and putting customer satisfaction in the front and center of everything that you do. So there should be a balance between AHT and customer satisfaction in a way that you are able to resolve the customer's concern, the customer is satisfied of your service, but it also took you a reasonable amount of time to finish that entire call or to resolve in some call centers or accounts, they actually do not have AHT or average handle time because it's possible that it is not considered a success metric on their end. And when I say AHT is not present in their account, that means that it's not included in their scorecard, so it's very possible. Like in my experience previously, there was it's like season by season. For example, for the first three months, 
uh, there was no AHT on the scorecard in the next three months. The AHT has a high impact or high weight on our scorecard. So being in the call center, you also have to learn how to adapt to these changes because it's very dynamic and it's ever changing. But if you do have AHT on your metric, then you have to learn some best practices and how to hit your target AHT metric. Now here are some best practices that you can follow to help you improve and eventually reduce your talk time or probably hold time and your um, entire AHT or average handle time. So the first one that I can think of is make sure that you know how to use your computer tools because one of the reasons, the most common reasons that an agent has a high AHT, you know, based on experience, is because that agent does not know how to use the tools or does not know how to navigate the, the tools or the computer well or properly. Of course, you will be taught how to do that during training, but do your best to familiarize the tools while on training so that once you start taking calls, you'll just, you know, get the hang of it, you know, where will you go if you need to verify a customer where will you go if you need to process a transaction where will you go if you need to send a billing statement you know those things if you're not familiar with your tools or the computer navigation you will just be shopping around all the links where will i go to do this where will i go to do this and it takes so much of your time aside from knowing how to navigate your computer or your tools also, make sure that you know how to use your knowledge base or your job aid because that will help you get the right answer the soonest time possible in case you don't know the right answer. Of course, there are a lot of you in the team, so not all the time that you will have someone to assist you. And in most cases, you really have to do things on your own which is why during training, most likely you will not be spoon-fed with the answers. You will have to know how to use your knowledge base. So when a customer asks a question and you don't know the answer, okay, you know how to search for that on your knowledge base. Pretty much works just like the Google search engine. If you know the keywords right, you will get to the answers right. And that is hopefully if your knowledge base is comprehensive and is arranged in an excellent manner because that's what I was used to back in my account. We had a great knowledge base and you know, great keyword positioning. So I hope that's also the same for you. Tip number two, take advantage of internal communications. What are internal communications? Most likely in your account, you will have internal chat room for your team or with your supervisor or with your QA analyst. Like in my previous job, um, we had a group chat so that when you have a question from the customer that you did not know the answer to and you're having a hard time looking for the answer from the knowledge base, then you can just chat your QA analyst or maybe your supervisor so that they will be, or they can give you the right answer the soonest time possible. But I urge you not to rely on that too much. And what I mean is that it's just for the reason that you need to be able to assist your customers as fast as you can or as efficiently as you can. After that, you know, once you've asked that question on your chat room, make sure you take note of that question so that after the call or during your break or lunch, you can ask your supervisor or QA where to find the answer on the knowledge base. What is the right answer? What is the correct answer? Is there a logic behind that question? You know, you have to know how to learn it for yourself and not just constantly asking questions without knowing where to even find the answers. Tip number three, learn how to be direct to the point. Avoid beating around the bush when you're speaking with your customers or going around in circles because that is a surefire way for you to lengthen your call. If you can explain something in one sentence or one statement, go for it. There are some cases when you really have to repeat what you have explained to your customers, but if you know that that customer already understood what you said in just one statement, then much better. So personally, what I did back then was that if there is a recurring type of call, like 
this type of call is always there every single day of my call center life so I'm already expecting it to come every day I would write that type of call on my notepad and then write down the resolution I will prepare a short script that I can use myself and that I can adjust or tweak based on the needs of the customer so that when that customer asks that type of call, I already have a script ready for the customer. I just need to look it up on my notepad and I'm ready. So it's faster because you don't have to formulate the scripting in your head right there and then. Um, take some time during your break or your lunch to write down short scripting. What do you think is the best way to respond to the customer in that particular situation? Trust me, it really helps and it really saves you time during the call. Tip number four, be open for coaching. Your QA and your supervisor are there to coach you and give you feedback from time to time. So when you are given coaching period, take it seriously, take advantage of it so that you can ask for best practices and how you can improve, how you can reduce your AHD, or you know what are the things that you can do more so that you will make your performance better when it comes to your average handle time. So again, take your coaching seriously. And tip number five, listen to your calls. During your coaching, most likely your supervisor will let you listen to your calls so that you can assess or evaluate what are the things that you did, that you did well or what are the things that you need to improve on. You will really have the opportunity to point out which are the things that you really need to improve on that you haven't realized when you were taking calls. So for example, you were taking calls and then you did not even realize that you're placing the customer on hold for already 30 minutes. For sure, your supervisor will coach you sometimes, but you can also proactively ask your supervisor to listen to a particular call so that you can learn from it. So you can tell your QA, I'd like to listen to that call that I had. Um, just take note of the time because that's the easiest way to find a call, the timestamp, like when it started and when it ended, or around what time range, so that you can find it easily. And you'll realize, ah, okay, in this part, I had too much fillers. I placed the customer in hold for such a long time, I did not even realize that when I was taking the call. So there, at least you know for yourself. And so that's about it for today. I really hope you've learned something from this video. And again, if you haven't liked my Facebook page, please just search for Call Center Ninja on Facebook and let's connect over social media. You can also find the link down below. You can also join my Facebook group if you like because I always answer comments and questions over there. And if you like this content, please like, subscribe if you haven't. And remember, I have videos every 